What is up guys? Seven O Savage here coming at you with a brand new video today. Today we are starting a kind of two-in-one project, the bench as well as the pantry cabinet. If you are new to the channel, we have been converting this sprinter van right here into the zombie apocalypse survival van. Let's go ahead and dive right in. All right guys, so this right here is the cabinet and bench that we're gonna be working on. All of these aluminum beams that you see throughout the van are 80-20 aluminum extrusions. There's an entire video on how we built this skeleton inside of the van. For this video, we're going to complete this pantry cabinet as well as this bench. We're gonna try and match the aesthetic of the kitchen galley in it while simultaneously building the most comfortable bench chair seat in a van. And right here is gonna be a very tall slide out drawer or potentially multiple drawers that contain all of the kitchen related stuff and potentially just other storage you never know in a van. A lot of the times you end up with like your top ramen right next to your cleaning chemicals. Very first thing we're gonna do here is the bench seat. When we first built the 8020 skeleton, I did look at a few different studies on ergonomics to try and create this bench to be ergonomically comfortable. And I ordered some foam, so let's go ahead and try it out. So, uh, sitting down in this bench, it's not quite as comfortable as I would like it to be. We're gonna put swivel seats on both of these so they can spin around, and those are gonna be really nice for work. But I really want this seat to be the throne, not the same throne in your bathroom, but a place that's very comfortable that you can sit for an extended period of time and do something like, you know, pull up YouTube, watch some 707. The big challenge with this seat right now is the height which is 19 and a half inches to the top of the foam and it compresses down to about 18 or 18 and a half. And right here, I've artificially sloped the back by just sloping the piece of plywood that we're resting the foam on. But I realized pretty quickly that we are indeed gonna need a sloped back instead of a straight up and down one. So I've decided to just completely redesign this seating area. There's a few different diagrams and research studies that I found on the internet depicting the different types of ergonomics of different types of chairs. My favorite study that I looked at took six different slopes of chairs from most productivity oriented to most relaxing. And the results of that study tell us a lot about what I need to make this chair look like. Option one and option two are considered high productivity chairs. They're very comfortable, but they're meant for actually doing work. And then when you get all the way down to option six, that is just an extreme lounger. You're doing nothing but looking up at the television, just chilling. So I picked something kind of in the middle here, right between option two and three. So it's a relaxing, but also potentially productive. I am gonna have a table that slides out here so that you're able to eat. And I don't want it to be awkward where you're like reaching out to try and use your fork like this. What all that means is we're gonna rebuild this to be slanted slightly downward for the seat slanted slightly this way for the backrest. And we need to completely rip this out and redesign how the 8020 skeleton looks to support that. The construction of this bench, as well as the construction of the entire skeleton in this van was built with just four components, literally just four things. First one are these extrusions that you buy in really long lengths and you cut them to the exact size that you need. Second component are these slide in or roll in T-nuts that go inside of the bars, just like this one right here. You get these angle brackets and then you get bolts that go through the angle brackets into those little nuts that you slid in. As long as you're making stuff that connects at 90 degrees, that's literally all you need. It is like adult Legos. It is so easy. Now for the bench we're making right now, that's where things get a little bit more complex. I've never done 80-20 at these awkward of an angles before. No better time to start than right now. Let's make it happen. Our prototype is ready and it is very, very janky. Believe it or not, this is the fastest and cheapest way that I could think of to prototype a chair like this to actually sit in and try out. Let's go ahead and give it the old college try. Please don't break, please don't break, please don't break. Oh. Ooh, ooh, that's not too bad. Pretty stoked at this chair. It does kind of remind me of an airplane seat though. And as a tall person, I freaking hate airplane seats. Yeah, I actually had my dad come out and take a review of this chair. And when he sat in it, he was like, hmm, well, it's not first class. 
It's not economy. Give this a solid business class. And you know what? I'll take it. I think I'm gonna readjust my goal for this chair from the most comfortable van chair in existence to the most comfortable van chair in this particular space in existence. So I spent some time adjusting the angles a little bit and making all of these pieces fit perfectly with each other. For those interested, I am putting all of the specifications on the screen right here. We're going to be able to get away with using the regular 80-20 angle brackets for a lot of these angles since they are fairly shallow. Like right here, I'm just going to use an angle bracket and cut off that corner that sticks out. Now the ones that I have to fabricate are like this angle and this angle. Especially for sharp angles, aluminum will crack very easily. If you need a sharp angle and your aluminum is cracking, you can anneal it, which basically means just heating it up with a blowtorch. But that changes the chemical structure of the aluminum and it becomes a lot less strong. For the first angle, I need it to be a little bit more obtuse. We're going to start with a regular 80-20 bracket and see if we can bend this puppy. These are actually insanely strong. What do you know, the angle brackets that they designed to hold 80-20 at a 90 degree angle do their job pretty well. We're not gonna be able to bend this, so I'm gonna try something else first. Let's cut ourselves off a piece of this angle. Screw it, we're just gonna anneal some flat bar. First, we need the angle to bend it to. Looks like 97.5. At this point, the framing for this seat is 100% complete. We have our custom fabricated angle brackets here. They're made out of just eighth inch aluminum. It's a lot easier to bend without it cracking. We also had to cut off a couple of the corners on a couple of the angle brackets. So while we wait for our foam and our fabric to come in the mail, let's move on to the next step. And that is the drawers in this bad boy. First one is gonna be a big drawer that comes out this way. This is gonna contain all of our heavy kitchen stuff like coffee maker, induction cooktop, pots, pans, stuff that I'll probably never use since I primarily cook in the microwave. Next up, we're gonna have a very important drawer that comes out from the bottom right here. I needed a drawer that's high enough to fit my laptops standing up. So this is gonna be my tech drawer. It's gonna slide out, it'll have a little laptop section and then I can put all of my other camera gear and stuff in there. And then for this skinny pantry section, I'm thinking we actually do it in two drawers. Having this all as one pantry drawer would not work out that well just because you'd be putting too much leverage on the slides and it wouldn't feel very good. If you want a little bit more detail on how to install bloom drawers, I covered that pretty in depth on the second part of the galley unit video. The wood that we use for our drawer boxes is this beautiful lightweight pre-finished maple. We use half inch for all of the sides and a quarter inch for the drawer bottom. For the faces, we do use half inch, but it's not the pre-finished version. That's because we learned the hard way paint doesn't stick to that finish. Alrighty, so we got all of these drawers done. They ranged from very standard and straightforward to very, very hard, primarily because they had to be built differently since they have two layers to them. One thing I learned about these bloom drawers is that the taller and skinnier they get, the more wobbly they get. And it's actually wobbly enough to where they'd probably be clinging into the sides while I'm driving. So I thought of a solution, and that is to put a regular drawer slide on one of the corners. I'm still using Bloom drawer slides down there. And then from this angle, everything is still concealed. But when you come onto this side, you can see it's being supported by another drawer slide, which I actually had to router out a part of the drawer so that it would fit perfectly and still be evenly spaced. This totally solves the problem. The drawer is now completely stable in here and it still slides nice and smooth. It's tradition on this channel to do at least one part of each project more than once. I did indeed build these drawers twice. Something about living in a van as opposed to living in a home is you're probably not gonna change as much as you think you're gonna change. If you're like me and you eat cereal and food out of the microwave anytime you're forced to cook yourself, you're probably gonna keep doing that when you live in a van. That's why it was very important for me that in this pantry, I could fit a whole king size box of cereal. Next step for this project is putting all of the outside faces on this cabinet. We're gonna use the exact same strategy as the galley unit in the tall cabinet as far as how we go about making these panels. 
first two panels are done here. These are obviously going to be the platform that our foam rests on top of. And that's why you just saw me drill a bunch of holes in these with the Forstner bit is because we need room for these cushions to breathe. Next up, we are gonna do this curved panel. Thankfully, it is exactly the same shape as this curved panel, but a little bit longer. From now on, please refer to me as the Jigsaw God. All right, so we've got our piece cut out. It fits perfectly with the rest of them. Now what we need to do is drill those same countersink bolt holes so that we can have a hole through this piece of wood into this extrusion and it will be held nice and firm. We do that with a couple of steps. We start off by drilling a regular old hole with a 3 8 inch drill bit. We're using 5 16th bolts, which is a little bit smaller than 3 8 if you're fractionally challenged like I am sometimes. That is what allows the threads of the bolt to fit in and a little bit of wiggle room so that we can align things perfectly. After we drill that regular bolt hole, we come in with the countersink bit so that the head of the bolt fits nice and flush with the top of the plywood. Let's make it happen. We got our holes drilled. This panel is officially done. Now we basically need to replicate that on all of the sides. The process for this is exactly the same as the process for this panel right here. We're literally just repeating it about eight or 10 more times. So I was literally so tired when I finished these panels that I forgot to record a clip of what the finished product looks like. Thankfully, I did take one photo when I uploaded to Instagram. Now we are going to paint these panels. We're gonna do the exact same thing as we did for painting the rest of the panels in the van. That includes one coat of multi-purpose primer two coats of Sherman Williams enamel. It's kind of like paint. It just dries a little bit harder. I use a quarter inch nap roller and I prefer to use six inches. Nothing wrong with being average. I'll put a link to all of the painting components that I use in the video description below. So I try to save some jobs to do while the coats of paint are drying. This time around, I am doing the edge banding on my drawers, but we have all of these ugly exposed edges of plywood. So what I'm going to do is take my edge banding tape, stick it on these, and then trim it off so it looks nice and natural and it matches the same grain. This is also pre-finished maple edge banding. I'll put a link to this in the description below. And this is what it looks like when it's totally finished edge banding. So I just showed this to my brother. I was like, hey, would you have ever noticed that uh, this was edge banding? Edge banding is sick. Our final coat of paint has finally dried. These panels are 100% complete. Overall, they look pretty good, but there is a couple of small issues. One of them being this portion right in here. What this comes down to is a trade-off of using the lighter weight five ply maple as opposed to something like an MDF or a nine ply Baltic birch. Both the MDF and Baltic birch are a lot heavier, but they're a lot stronger and they're gonna be way flatter. So you're gonna see a lot less painting imperfections when you're done with them. These ones are a lot lighter weight, but since they're a five ply, there's just a lot of natural imperfections with this wood. My hope is that once I put them in the van after a few days, I kind of just stop noticing them. If that doesn't happen, then I'll just kind of organically get the motivation to pull them back down and do another coat of paint. That being said, let's put these puppies into the van and see how they look. All right, guys, we got the panels up. Take a look with how they turned out. I am so stoked with how they look. Everything's kind of starting to match in here. Obviously, we don't have our cushions yet, but without the cushions, it's a pretty good match to the butcher block. The panels themselves look really, really nice. From this distance, you can't even see the imperfections that I showed you guys earlier. As you can see, we have all of our drawers, but they're currently unopenable, so we got to put some handles on them. In the part two video of this galley unit, which I will put on the screen right here, 
I did a full review of all of the different latches and grads that I considered for this van. I ended up using these RV Labs latches, which work pretty well. I'm pretty happy with them. I'm not going to say that they're legendary or anything like that, but I think they're pretty good. And they look really nice, which is what I'm happy about. All you do to install these is attach the pole to the backside of the drawer face. And then if you look up inside of the drawer, there's a little catch there. Basically this little pull catches on the catch. And then when you pull the handle out, it disengages the little catch here. In total, we have four RV lab latches, one for this drawer, one for this drawer, and then two on the small pantry drawers. Let's make it happen. We got all of the latches installed. This first one here actually doesn't even have a catch at all. We simply rattered out some of the aluminum on this quarter inch beam. On the second skinny one here, we actually screwed the catch directly into the bottom of the drawer box. For this first big one, we installed the catch using a piece of angled aluminum so that it was adjustable up and down and we could get the right amount of tension. Speaking of tension, I talked to the owner and the best way to pull these catches open is actually not to pull them directly, which I've actually been doing this whole time, but it is to curl and use your knuckles as a brace in order to pull the latch out and disengage the mechanism. And then for the final latch, looking up and behind here, we actually had to router out a piece of the 80-20 right here so that the catch actually is the backside of this piece of plywood. And that sums it up for the latches. So the only thing left for this project to be truly 100% complete is finishing these cushions. I do have these foam pieces, which I did accidentally order the wrong size for, and I'm gonna have to get them recut when I send them to the seamstress. You guys might remember the galley unit video where I asked you guys what you preferred between this butcher block countertop and the white Korean countertop. There was an overwhelming majority in favor of this butcher block, so I've left this one installed. I do have a similar question for you guys as far as this bench seat and what fabric we should use. This is going to be a little bit awkward because I do not have time to actually get these cushions made. I'm going to do my best to showcase these two color options that I want your guys' opinion on without having the cushions made. So ignore the yellow protruding foam and the overall lack of professionalism. First color I have are these kind of fancy looking stripes. This is what they look like compared to the rest of the van. Now I thought this one was a little bit interesting because it added some sort of color to the van. Imagine all of the walls and everything are gonna be white as well. Here we have the second option. Now this is laid out in a way similar to what the result was when my mom used to ask me to make my bed in the morning. Hopefully you can kind of get the gist Here's what it looks like in comparison to all of the other stuff in the van. It's got this little arrowy kind of pattern on it. Both of these fabrics are made by a company called Sumbrella that makes really high quality indoor and outdoor fabrics. I think these are both outdoor approved. That being said, hopefully they never actually see any water. So let me know what you guys think. Should I go with the gray one or the multicolored one? So before we actually wrap up this video, I have a little bit of bonus content or a uh, bonus question for you guys. Right now you can see we have all of these bolts that are actually exposed as part of the design for this van. I figured out how to order bolts that match the color of the paint that we used. They're a satin white powder coated bolts. I want to install these to see what you guys think. So here's what it looks like with the regular stainless steel bolts installed that you can buy at pretty much any hardware store versus the custom white powder coated version. I'm kind of leaning towards the cleaner look of the white ones. It kind of balances that industrial and cleanness in my opinion. Let me know what you guys think though. I might be a little bit influenced because I'm so happy carrying around these bags of adult candy here. I also can't emphasize enough how amazing it is to simply be able to unbolt these from the outside in a matter of seconds and replace them. It's very different than when you're in a house and you don't need to rip out your walls very often. But when you're in a van or you're in an RV, you're going to often find yourself needing to get inside of wall panels or inside of cabinets. I also want to give a shout out to the guy who made these bolts for me. They were really easy to work with, completely custom order just for me, and they were really cheap. So I'm not sure how he actually makes a living doing this, but if you need custom bolts, definitely order from this guy. And just like that, we are 100% done with the bench and pantry installation. Don't click away yet because we are about to show a montage of the finished cabinet. If you made it this far in the video and you're not yet a subscriber, 
what the heck are you doing? I'm gonna keep making content and keep trying to make this content better. Slap that like button below. That's gonna help the YouTube algorithm push this video out to more people so that they can learn the same stuff you just did. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.